we are a product of our ancestors somewhere something has gone wrong which is leading to a cancer and that area of that genome has been transferred regularly so if somebody gets positive there is a 50% chance their sibling is going to be positive 50% chance yes because it's come from one of the parents right that's why you need to test the reason we should do a genetic test first because i personally feel it is very important to understand the biology of the patient that is in front of you what is wrong with their biology we do guesswork we do a blood test we find out what's there today and then we start the process we want to take that guesswork away pranav brings a lot to the table as a scientist as a founder of a genetic company now this has not been paid for let me make that clear this is brought in public interest to everyone out there who wants to watch this and learn how could they do their own testing so we do get people thinking that one size fits all and i think why i invited you in today was to get your perspective as a founder of a genetic company and explain that there is something called a blueprint and it is not some hocus pocus science in a nutshell if i had to tell you what a blueprint is like imagine you're trying to build a 70 story tower without any plans what's going to happen i don't think the building's ever going to reach 70 right and if it does by some miracle it might collapse and if it still stays there by any miracle you will have rooms of different sizes none of the apartments would be the same it's going to be a total chaos so a blueprint is a fundamental in which you build on something right for example when you mentioned your gluten intolerant and I'm lactose intolerant what it essentially tells us is that these are substances that your body doesn't agree with so when you get a blueprint you kind of get what you good at what you're not good at what are the great things about you what are not so great things about you and your family and your lineage and that you should be aware of we all have ancestral histories on where we come down from what is the kind of food that we've grown up eating you know we've discussed that offline a couple of times but these are all parameters that essentially come back and tell you that this is going to work for me this is not going to work for me etc so for a layman language it is like it will give you an insight into things that you know when you're 40 by experience right but at a younger age so prana you know i get this question asked a lot in the clinic what is the difference between a genetic test and a blood test and how can people understand this let me again give you a very simple anecdotal experience here a blood test is like you know you're going on a holiday and you are posting your stories and your photographs on instagram and it's for the gram right it's now it's current everybody needs to know what's happening that is exactly what a blood test is what's wrong in your body today what is the level of vitamin d3 today what is the level of hemoglobin any other nutrition mineral etc whatever test you prescribe it shows you the current state of your body it's like you taking to a car to a service when a sensor goes off it's only going to identify what's going wrong at that particular moment right what is a dna test a dna test actually tells you why this is happening in fact when people work in uh, the clinic with me i always say the blood test is your fuel tank level hmm and the dna test is your factory blueprint that says this is diesel petrol or electric and what is the capacity of that fuel tank correct can genetic testing in addition to this eating regulation behaviors go deeper in managing other conditions or emotional issues when people don't have any focus and there's no clear medical understanding how does understanding the genes lead to a better maybe behavior change or getting some inspiration ki or and you have an emotional snacking gene boss behavior self so what's your take on the genetics and is any little bit of science there is great science behind this these are behavioral triggers what do you mean by behavioral triggers so sometimes when you said that you feel emotionally upset and you feel happy after eating gluten free cake or a cheese for that matter or a samosa or vada you know these are your guilt foods that make you happy you know the comfort foods that give you pleasure but When you eat that you're not eating a sliver of it anymore you're eating like hordes of it that is emotional eating distress break up ke baad ice cream khana right you know something of that sort and some people when they're upset they don't look at food at all right and some do and these are a function of your genetics to help you create good habits is very important but again indians are very smart you have to give them a reason to have a habit creation in place and the dna test is one of the most important reasons for you to believe in the habit creation process because it tells you this works i'll give you another example you know there are some people in stress will be like okay this went wrong let's fix this move on no problem and there will be some people who are like oh shit this is wrong what do i do how do i fix this they go on anxiety etc there is one gene that is responsible for this behavior it's called comt 
Now, if you have a good variant of it, you may not have sustained focus, but you will eliminate problems very fast. But if you have the other gene of it, the slower version of it, you'll essentially procrastinate. Anxiety will build up. Nearly two decades, I've been very passionate about genetic testing with regards to food, lifestyle, health coaching. Pranav today is technically my business partner in the genetic plans that we deliver at the Qua Nutrition Clinics. They have provided us cutting edge training, the reports and integration into our proprietary diet planning software. I can't wait for the next few months as AI comes in and begins to give us, the nutritionist and dietitian, better viewpoints into how to convince patients to up their game in exercise, sleep and nutrition. I had a very talented gentleman who heads one of the largest software companies in the world meet me at an airport one day and he says, my son plays cricket, what should I do? I said, um, you want to do the Olympic nutrition plan? He says, but he plays cricket. I says, you still want him to do this test? And I explain it to him in a very simple way. He says, you want to discover if your kid has the level of genetics that hopefully your passion as a father, his passion as a kid, the money that you have to push him is invested correctly or you're propping up a kid on a false dream. So I've seen many families break between the age of 18 and 22 when the kid is like struggling and struggling from a point of view has all the right mentality but is competing at an international level and everything is going wrong in terms of performance or injury or whatever. The father actually turned around and said to me in after I presented the genetic plan a day later he said you know what you just helped me make the best decision in my life because I've interviewed so many people whose families have relocated where the wife and kid are living in one city the husband's in another city because of the job so families get torn apart because of sports and they go through five or eight or ten years like this yes they sell parcels of land and to pay for that new home, new accommodation, extra car, extra car. Although it's rich people are doing this, poor people, it's even harder toll. But I said to him, the genetic test is a crystal ball gazing into your entire family's future. Because now as a father, you can decide where to invest. And I'd like to end over here with this. My son was the youngest tested nutrition genetic kid in the country at the age of lesser than I think four or five months. And the moment his test came back, he's gluten intolerant and lactose intolerant. So can you imagine both my in-laws who are doctors who not understand yeah. Why by the age of two, I stopped milk for him? The cancer screening gene test. Is it true it can really discover lineage of cancer across family? Absolutely. These are genes that get transferred through generations. So for example, if a woman at 60 is getting tested for breast cancer and she's positive for it, her siblings will have a 50% chance. And if one of the siblings is positive, their children will have, again, a possibility of that test. That's why the cancer screening is something that we kind of promote and propagate because if one person in the family gets it it's traveled through the family so all the siblings all the uncles aunts and all the children the nephews and nieces all of them need to get tested otherwise they're going to be in the dark should i test an uninitiated young athlete or go to a super champion like virat kohli and pv sindhu and get them genetically tested i think you should do both pv sindhu and virat kohli's genetics will tell you what is the makeup that needs to get to a good athlete and you can follow the journey and a young athlete an uninitiated athlete is somebody that you you want to test and help them become like a Virat Kohli. Now, we've heard this statement a lot of times. There are cricketers who are more talented than Sachin and Virat, etc. But never seen the light of day because they had nothing, no one to believe. Maybe the genetics could do it.